This video is sponsored by AVC Labs. Whether you like it or not, AI is changing the way that we as artists are working today. And I'm gonna be taking a look at ABC Labs Video Enhancer AI, which uses AI not only to upscale videos, but also be able to process them in a way to de-blur out of focus shots, which is crazy, de-noise footage, as well as blur out multiple faces in a single clip automatically. So let's take a look at how this app works and how it performs. So here's the app, it's very easy to use. I'm just gonna click anywhere to open up a video file and I have some prepared here. So the one I'm gonna use is a six second clip of a hot air balloon. So I'll just click on open and right away it tells us the information about this video clip. It's 1920 by 1080, so full HD, 25 frames per second and it's only six seconds long. Now, if you were using a much longer clip, say it was two minutes long, you're definitely gonna wanna only process the part of that clip that you want to upscale and use because this is a very time consuming process. And you can do that by setting in and out points right down here. So find wherever you need to go or just click and find the specific second, minute, or hour time code that you want and set the out point. Same thing for the in. I wanna process this whole clip since it's only six seconds, so I'll reset that. But the first thing we need to do is come over to the feature list and choose what we wanna do, upscale or face blur. This obviously isn't footage of people. I'm not face blurring, so we're gonna leave it at upscale. Down in the model settings, that will always be checked by default. I do have some settings for this though. This is where we're gonna choose our model. These are the four different quality modes basically for how the footage is being processed. Standard is fastest, ultra is a little bit slower but is more finely detailed. Standard multi-frame is the same as the regular standard except that it processes multiple frames at a time which is supposed to help reduce jitter when there's fast moving objects in your footage. And same thing for ultra multi-frame. It's the same as ultra just processing multiple frames at once. Now what you need to keep in mind is that the further down this list you go, the longer it will take to process. So what I like to do is start with standard and see how it looks during the preview. And if it's good, I'll stick with that. If not, then I'll move down the list. So let's stick with standard. I'm not going to denoise this footage because it's not noisy and I'm not doing any face refinement. So I'm gonna leave all of those unchecked. Go down to the video settings section and this is where you can increase or decrease the brightness, saturation, or contrast. This isn't something I'd wanna do during processing because it's gonna be baked in. I'd rather do that in an editor. And then we have two more options, crop to fill frame. So if you're scaling this to a different output aspect ratio, you can fill that frame so there aren't any black bars. I leave that unchecked because I like to just scale it up by a factor rather than put it to a specific resolution. And then the last option in the video settings is de-interlace. And this is not interlaced footage, so I'm gonna leave that unchecked. Finally, the output settings. This is where we choose how much we wanna upscale. And there are a lot of presets in this list from SD all the way up to 4K. Now, like I said, I don't wanna choose a specific resolution. I wanna maintain my aspect ratio, so I'm just going to double the size using 200%. Also keep in mind, the larger you upscale, the longer it's gonna to take to process because it's generating a lot more pixels. The video format is where you can choose one of many different codecs. I'm gonna stick with H.264 to keep the file size low, but you could change this all the way up to ProRes 422HQ, which is great when you need that quality. Finally, you just choose where you wanna save this and you could click Start Processing. But what if you wanna just see a preview of this configuration? Well, instead of clicking Start Processing, you can just come over to this preview and click on this play button and it will just process the first 30 frames so you can get an idea of what this is going to look like before you commit to actually processing the entire clip. Down here in the bottom left corner, it's showing you what frame it's processing and eventually it does show you the preview here. So I can click and drag around on either of these views and we'll see the original original side-by-side -side with the upscaled version. And you can see that this is doing a very nice job of upscaling the footage, smoothing it all out so it doesn't look so low res and it's doing it pretty quickly. I could also see a one-to-one -one view fit to this window just by clicking this button. That's great. I'm gonna say that's good to go. So I'll click stop and I'm ready to start processing. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that, and you will see that this takes a little bit of time to start, but the standard method actually is not that slow. It does a good job. Down here, it's telling me how long it thinks it'll take to process the entire clip and how many seconds per frame it's taking to process. Now I'm screen recording at the same time that I'm processing this, and this is using my GPU. If I go up into the settings, we are taking advantage of my RTX 3070 Ti. If you have a GPU, you can select it here. Otherwise, you can run this on your CPU, and you can also change the max memory consumption here if things are slowing down. Like I said, I'm doing a screen recording, so that's taking some of my GPU power. So this is not running at full performance, but I've actually processed this clip already with all four models. So why don't we go take a look at the results? 
Now playing each one of these back to back, you might not even notice a difference. But keep in mind that you're watching a 1920 by 1080 video and we've upscaled all these processed versions by two times. So they're actually now 3840 by 2160. And I'll zoom into 100% here in a second so you can really see the detail. But I think it's a lot easier to see the processing if we just take the first frame of each one of these clips and compare them on top of each other. So here's the original standard. Going back and forth between the two, you can clearly see that there is processing going on. And if I scale this up to 100% and go back and forth again, this is where you can really see what's happening. Obviously the original looks like I'm scaling it up by 200% and the standard processing doesn't have that same low res look. Now if we compare standard to ultra, you can see that it has a little bit more fidelity. But if I zoom back out to 100%, you can see that it's also having an effect on some of the colors in the hot air balloon. That's just something to keep in mind. Let's zoom into that same part of the ground there so we can compare again, original, standard, ultra. Now let's look at what happens when we go to standard multi-frame. This is a result that I am not happy with. It's clearly muddying everything up and this took longer to process than the ultra mode. Now I think that this was more my fault. This is not the type of clip that you'd wanna apply the multi-frame processing to because it is a pretty slow moving shot. There's not a lot of fast things moving around, but this is actually introducing flicker if I play this back. All right, let's go back to the first frame and compare the standard multi-frame to the ultra multi-frame. And you'll see that all of that mushiness that went away. But if I play it back, we are still seeing that flickering, especially right here on the hot air balloon. So again, this probably isn't the right type of clip to be applying this to, especially because the ultra multi-frame is the slowest of all four of these processes. Speaking of which, here are all the processing times for this same six second clip, all upscaling by 200% using each processing model. By far, standard is the fastest, and comparing the quality of standard to ultra is almost negligible when you're watching this in real time. So it's really up to you whether or not going for ultra and taking that extra processing time is worth it. And I think this really is on a case by case basis. Some shots may just work better in standard than others. But as you can see, the multi-frame processing is more than double the time on both standard and ultra modes. And keep in mind, this is just for a six second clip. Now there also is a denoise feature. And if I enable that, I can just scroll down and instead of outputting to a higher resolution, just say 100%, that way it won't actually upscale anything. And you might be thinking, could this be used to denoise 3D renders? Well, I tried exactly that and I purposely exported with low render settings out of Redshift so that there was plenty of noise to work with. And it does remove the noise, but as you can see, it also removes a lot of texture and the results were not that great. You can see a little bit of jitter here on the ground. So I would not recommend using this as a denoiser for 3D renders. However, it can produce good results on video. You just have to keep in mind how long it takes to process that footage. Another feature we have access to is face refinement. And this is really interesting. At the beginning of this clip, this boy's face is out of focus and it does come into focus very quickly. But if we were in a bind and we really needed the start of this clip to have his face in focus, there's no filter or effect that you can apply in After Effects or Premiere to fix that. It's just too soft. But with face refinement on, again, I'll leave my video size to 100%. Let's just preview it and this does take a bit of time to start processing, but once it identifies the face, it's able to start processing those pixels and generate information where there wasn't any before, and the results are pretty impressive. So let's pan over to where this boy's face is, and look at that. I mean, that is pretty amazing at what this is able to do. The left, again, is the original. The right is the AI-generated face for the beginning of this clip. If I go out to 100%, you can see it's doing a really amazing job at bringing this face back into focus, even though his face is not out of focus for very long. In a bind, this would be fantastic. And if we take a look at this final clip as a whole, in real time, you can't really tell that that was artificially generated. Sure, if you pause on a still frame, you can see, oh, that was processed, but playing it back in real time, it is completely passable. I was really blown away by this result, but keep in mind, this is pretty much an ideal case for this type of processing. 
the face is out of focus for a very brief amount of time and it comes back into focus very quickly. If the entire clip had this boy's face out of focus and you were watching the processed version for an extended period of time, it would probably look unnatural and you would be able to tell something funky is going on here. But for shots that are maybe just slightly out of focus, and especially on shots where the focus might just drift very subtly and you wanna bring that detail back, this could work very well. If we go back to the feature list and change this from upscaler to face blur, this is another feature of Video Enhancer AI. I have a clip of these three men just walking down the street and what this is able to do is automatically blur out their faces and it can do all three of them at once. Again, I don't wanna upscale or denoise this clip, so I'll leave those unchecked and my video output is set to 100%, so I'm not actually upscaling. But again, I can preview this, and this is a relatively quick process compared to upscaling or doing the face refinements. It's basically tracking the faces and then putting a blur map around them for the duration of the clip. And just like that, it's processed the first 30 frames. It does a really good job, and here's the clip in its entirety. So this could be a very quick way for processing. You can even go into the face blur settings and change this to have a different amount of blur as well as putting a photo over their faces rather than blurring it out if you'd like to do that. Now to get this app, you have three different options. There's a subscription that's month to month, a full year, or you could pay once for a lifetime license. Definitely check the website link in the description for up-to-date pricing. But if you're in a bind and you're not ready to commit to an entire year or paying outright for the app, a month to month plan is nice for when you're in a bind and you really have no other way of doing what this app can do. I think the results speak for themselves. Obviously, this is not a magic app that is just going to take a low resolution file and make it 4K with absolutely no artifacting. There is processing visible, but in a lot of cases, it does not come across that way, especially when you're playing it back in real time. And those other features of de-blurring an out of focus shot and being able to put the blur on top of multiple faces all at once very quickly are really nice to have. Let me know down in the comments what you think of this app and if you've used any AI to upscale or do any kind of processing on your own footage. And also let me know if there are any other apps that you'd like me to take a look at and give you my opinion on. Thanks again to ABC Labs for giving me a trial to their product so I can give my honest review and I'll see you in the next video. Hey, 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 hey,